An hour and a half later, the cores, baked hard, are taken out of the ovens. checked for dimensional accuracy and any rough edges are smoothed out. Those that are passed by the inspectors are sprayed with a graphite mixture to provide them with a protective skin against the molten metal which will soon be poured over them. When they have been dried off, they are hung on a pendulum conveyor and start their journey to the mold assembly line. A mould is now prepared for one of the two halves of the cylinder block. Over the pattern, which is accurately made, is placed a moulding box, and they are securely clamped together. A mixture of moist sand, clay and coal dust is poured onto the pattern while it is on a jolting machine. The vigorous action of the jolt machine shakes the sand into the crevices of the pattern, until the pneumatic ram on the head of the machine descends and the sand is squeezed under tremendous pressure into a firm mass. The moulding box is withdrawn from the machine and the shape of the exterior of the bottom half of a cylinder block is clearly seen in hard packed sand. It is again sprayed, this time with a heat resisting dressing. Now the time has come for the cores to be assembled into the mould. As each of them is placed in position, it is checked for accuracy of location. The water jacket core is assembled with the help of a gauge. After the gauge has been removed, the bore and crankcase cores are placed in position. As this mold is for a six cylinder engine, there are three cores. The end cores are fitted in position and gauged. And now the bottom half of the mold is ready for union with the top half. This is made exactly similar to the way in which the bottom half was produced. First the moulding box, then the sand, the jolting machine, and finally the ram. Before the final cores are placed in position, vents are checked to allow gas to escape when the molten metal is being poured in. halves of the mould are placed together, accurately located with large dial pins. After being securely clamped, the completed mould is ready to be filled with molten metal. Meanwhile, the iron, which we saw at the beginning of our story in the form of pigs, is being melted down in readiness for the moulds.
metallurgist is responsible for the quality of the iron. He keeps a constant check on the melting process through the inspection window. And this is what he sees. Actually, it is the molten metal trickling through the incandescent bed of coke. From every tapping, a specimen of the molten liquid is taken. After it is cooled off, this spoonful of metal is sent to the laboratory to be analyzed. The metallurgist makes a preliminary check of a sample. With his vast experience, he can make an approximation as to whether the metal is ready for final check. Metal chippings of the samples from the furnaces are sent to the foundry laboratories for analysis. After being weighed, they are dissolved with chemicals to check the various elements in the metal. In the laboratory is the key for the high quality of Morris castings. Maintaining an all-round-the-clock vigil, a group of technicians ensure that only the very best metal is built into Morris engines. They are in constant touch with the metallurgists in the foundry and no tapping is made without their approval. As soon as the OK has been received, word is passed to the foundrymen, who by means of long iron rods unplug the cupola to release the molten metal. Out it rushes, and at this stage, powdered alloys are added as required. Once the ladle is filled, the cupola is plugged off with a wad of fire clay and the ladle is taken to the conveyor on which the moulds are poured.